Hi, welcome to the Splendor video tutorial entitled Rigid Bodies Part 5, Breakable Constraints. This is the fifth in a series of video tutorials concerning Blender's rigid body dynamics. If you have not viewed the previous tutorials, please do as they contain information that may not be covered here. In the last video tutorial, we examined Blender's rigid body constraints. One useful aspect of rigid body constraints is the ability to break the constraint upon collision. To demonstrate this effect, I have modeled a number of objects in my Blender scene. At the bottom is an extruded plane object named Floor then a table-like object named Base, then a flat plane object named Glass, and a sphere named Ball. All the objects have their origin point at the center of their geometry and have had their scales applied. I will go to the Scene Editor and invoke the Rigid Body World for this scene. I'll select the Floor object and make it a passive element. I'll select the Base object and make it a passive element. I'll select the glass object, then switch to front view and place it just above the base object. I'll then make it an active element. I'll then select the sphere and make it an active element. I'll then play the simulation. The ball drops down along the z-axis and rests on the glass, which itself is resting on the base. I'll stop the simulation and go to frame number one. I'd like the ball to break the glass into pieces and fall through to the floor. To do this, I will use the rigid body constraint system and activate its breakable functionality. For now, in the outliner panel, I'll hide the ball and base objects. I'll then go to Top View and select the Glass object, tab into Edit Mode, and then go to Wireframe Display. I'll press the A key to make sure that I'm in Vertex Select Mode, and I'll select all of the vertices and subdivide the object. With all of the vertices selected, I'll press the X key and delete Only Faces. I'll select the center vertex and one of the corner vertices and press the F key to create an edge. I'll do the same for the other three corners. I'll then select all of the vertices and press the F key, which will make a new face for each segment. I'll go to face select mode. The glass object now has eight triangular faces. I'll select one of the faces and press the P key and separate it from the object. I'll do the same for all of the other faces. Then I'll tab out of edit mode. I now have eight new glass objects. I'll select the original glass object, which is now nothing more than an origin point, and I'll delete it. I'll select each of the individual glass objects, set the origin to the geometry, and make them active elements. I now have eight individual glass objects, each with their object origin located in the center of the geometry 
and all our active rigid body elements. I'll go to Solid Shading Display and unhide the other objects. Then play the simulation. The glass objects fall apart due to the force of gravity and fall down along the z-axis followed by the ball object. Also notice that some of the glass objects are falling through the passive floor plane object. This sometimes happens when objects that have no z-dimension and very little mesh structure collide. I'll select the floor object and tab into edit mode and subdivide it five times to make a very dense mesh. I will then tab out of edit mode and play the simulation. The glass pieces no longer fall through the floor object. I'll stop the simulation and go to frame number one. I want the glass pieces to stay together until the ball object collides with them. To do this, I will first hide the ball in the base for clarity. I'll then go to Top View and Wireframe Display. I'll select two of the glass pieces and press the Connect button in the Rigid Body Tools panel. This adds by default a fixed constraint between the two objects. I'll go around the objects and connect each to its neighbor with a fixed constraint. I now have seven fixed constraints holding the eight glass objects together. Each constraint has a newly created control empty. I'll select the first control empty and in the physics rigid body constraint panel, I'll check mark the breakable checkbox. Note that there is a threshold force of 10 associated with this breakability. I'll reset this threshold controller to one. I'll select each of the remaining control empties and check mark its breakable checkbox and reset the threshold setting to 1. I'll then go to Solid Shading Display Mode and unhide the ball and base objects. I'll then select the ball object and in the Physics Rigid Body panel set its mass to 20. I'll then play the simulation. The ball now crashes the glass plane and the glass objects and the ball object fall to the floor.